Hi, my name is Ron Dorn, and I'd like to give you my best overview over the fun and exploration that you can do in exploring the Grand Canyon relationship between microclimate and vegetation. And I'd like to do this by jumping to a question in stage zero. The question has you match different locations to the different sort of things you'll see in the game. It's question number five. So in this screenshot, I hope the sh screen sharing, you can see five different Park Service videos that I've made available to you via both the ASU website and then also to be able to download from the National Park Service if you wish. One of them is a very cold winter scene on the north rim of the Grand Canyon in a low line river. It's really not really a river, it's just a creek bed. And what's happening is the cold air from the hillsides above it have sunk down and it's called cold air drainage. And this is explained in a bit of detail in the PDF file. Another microclimate setting that you can see in the Grand Canyon is the video I'm playing now, zooming into the bottom of the Colorado River where the water itself of the river is evaporating water and it's cooling the surfaces. And then you can see the vegetation around the river that is soaking up the water and evaporating. It's called evapotranspiration. And in the PDF file of stage zero, it explains the idea of evapotranspiration cooling that you can especially see in summer temperatures. Then another video is down in the center of the canyon, where you have these platforms called the tunnel platform, they're heat accumulators. Even though the scene of a burrow train was made in April, those surfaces are having high sun during long daylights, and they're absorbing a lot of solar radiation, and they're heating back up, and they're emitting long wave radiation, which is warm temperatures. So these settings down in the canyon are heat accumulators. Yet another aspect of what you can see in the game has to deal with diurnal or daily fluctuations. So you are familiar with the sun's path moves from west to east during the day, and it's also much higher sun in summer and much lower sun in winter. So you can read about the diurnal radiation effect that's been discussed in the GPH 111 main class and its effect on surface temperatures. But in the Grand Canyon, you're gonna come face to face with what you're seeing in this view here, which is sunrise over Yaki Point. What I'd like to highlight is that as the sun rises, it rises in the east and the east facing slopes get the sun first in the morning. So think about it. East facing slopes heat up first, and the west facing slopes get the afternoon sun. This means that you should be able to see the diurnal effect in the temperatures of the Grand Canyon, especially since the images in the game are required at 10 a.m. in the morning. So anytime you have a north-south oriented ridge, the east-facing side should actually be warmer at 10 a.m. when the data were acquired because they're heating up first. And then the last piece to talk about of what you're going to explore in the game is the idea of tree lines here on page 24. You're seeing a bighorn sheep baby, a ewe, walking around the lower tree line in the Grand Canyon, the lower tree line has scrubby dwarf conifers like juniper and pinion pine. And oh, it's very adorable, but this gives you a real life view of what the tree line looks like. So in the game, you can explore how the exposure north and south facing slopes affect what you see in the game. So let's jump to the question in the game and we'll do a couple of these for you to explore more on your own. It's hopefully not a difficult question in which you go to different locations in the Grand Canyon microclimate game. 
and you match these locations with these different videos and also the description of what you're seeing. Let's see what's going on. <clears throat> Here's the game that I brought up and you're on the south rim. I'm moving the mouse around to change the orientation and the avatar is looking down into the canyon. The three different layers of information you can see in the game are NDVI, which is the amount of biomass, the total amount of vegetation matter that the satellite recorded. Notice that in the inset map on the north rim, it's much darker green. And on the south rim, it's lighter green. It's because the south rim is lower and gets less precipitation. And so it's a lighter forest. You can also instantly see winter temperatures where the key is provided here. And then summer temperatures in the game are provided where you can see they range from about 80 degrees to over 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's explore the game from a few contexts. Let's first start with a winter time temperature focus to see what the match is here. The first one, and we're gonna have to fast travel to this location. So let's try and see if copying and pasting from the PDF file will work. Ah, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it gets messed up, but I'm copying and pasting the latitude and the longitude coordinates, and then we're gonna jump right there. Where are you? You're actually at the same location as one of the videos. This one here for a viewpoint on the south rim and you're instructed to look at wintertime temperatures. In this game view, notice that we've oriented the ridge here so that it's north-south. That means that you can get a good idea of the temperature variations on the east-facing slopes and then on the west-facing slopes. Remember that in the morning, since the data for temperatures are required at 10 a.m., what you see in this video about sunrise or the diurnal cycle would be logical as an explanation for why these east-facing slopes in the wintertime temperatures are especially seen. So if you zoom around from the avatar and zoom out, those slopes facing east tend to be warmer than those slopes facing west. So you have one of the matches right there. Let's try another match. Let's go for summer temperatures. Let's shoot for this one, 36.1941. Fast travel again, see if the copy and paste works. And in this location here, and you were instructed to look at summer temperatures. Let me hopefully not make you sick. You are down in the bottom of the Colorado River and the bottom of the Grand Canyon at this location here. And it's actually the exact same location of this video. It's the junction of the little Colorado River coming in, meeting the main Colorado River. And if you remember that I use this as an example of evaporative cooling, and lo and behold, in this summertime image, right at the bottom of the main Colorado River, you can see a distinct cooling effect, both from the evaporation from the river and the evapotranspiration from the vegetation. You see a little bit of cooling down in the Little Colorado River, but the Little Colorado River is often very dry. It tends to flow mostly during very wet conditions with a lot of rain. And so during the hot of summer, in June when the image was required, there was very little flow in the Little Colorado River. And so you get little evaporative cooling. Again, this image was acquired at 10 a.m. in the morning, but you can see the different effects of temperature. I'm gonna stop the presentation now and encourage you to explore and have fun with the game. 
please don't try and rush through it. Take advantage of stage zero to get a good feeling of how to play the game in a low stress environment. And I'd like to remind you again that when you do go into Canvas and plug in your answers, stage zero, you're allowed to take the quiz twice just because we want to make sure you gain a lot of confidence. All the rest of the stages, there's only one option. Have fun, explore, and go places that you would never be able to go to otherwise.